this stage of an innovation-driven company has its own problems. When starting, it's highly desirable to have at least a functional prototype to demonstrate to prospective customers and investors. With software products, everything is relatively easy. Laptop and the Internet is almost all that a startup needs. To demonstrate a hardware product, everything is more involved. It might require metal processing, electronics, plastics. It is necessary to search for contract manufacturing partner or use your own resources to create the product. Each iteration might require a lot of time, effort and money. How can innovators be helped? Specialists from Novosibirsk Science Campus have the answer. Akadem Gorodok, the oasis of Soviet science, was built 20 kilometers from Novosibirsk. Construction started in 1957, initiated by the academic Mikhail Lavrentiev. The settlement is compact and one can get to work on foot or by bike. This area is home to more than 40 institutes of the Russian Academy of Sciences and Novosibirsk State University. In addition to being a center of academic science, Akadem Gorodok is also an area for development since the innovative businesses of the early 90s. We have many businesses here, and in general it's efficient, but we need to acknowledge that these businesses face very serious and still unsolved problems. A technology park could have solved these problems. Local businessmen dreamt about it as early as 2000s. Unfortunately, the decision to build the technology park was only made in March 2006 by the federal government, the administration of Novosibirsk region and the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The first problem to be addressed were production facilities. Akadem Goroda companies have been confined to basement and partially abandoned industrial zones. It's obvious that these conditions negatively impact on businesses in the planning of long-term development, attracting investment and buying expensive equipment. Akadem Garada quickly built out a new area of modern, low-rise Western European-style buildings. Their construction was financed by the companies themselves, which will get their own offices and manufacturing sites. The second problem is developing the infrastructure to stimulate the growth of young companies. Therefore, the technology park specialists decided to seek help of experienced businessmen who had previously crossed that bridge and knew better than anyone else what was required. The unique nature of our technology park can best be demonstrated with this example. You know the favorite quote from Field of Dreams, build it and they will come? For us, it was 100% the opposite. The first facility which started construction was for an instrumentation business. Representatives of the leading companies in Academ Garadok were already involved in the design stage. This is the key to the success of Novosibirsk Technology Park. The people learned over many years, particularly in the 90s when science fell on hard times, how to survive together by obtaining product orders from abroad. They clearly know that the creation of the technology park allowed them to fulfill orders more easily and learned also that strength lies in unity. Andrei Brizgalov is among those who developed the concept of the instrumentation factory. The engineering company Uniscan, founded by him, has been operating since the 90s. He experienced firsthand all the troubles of high-tech businesses in Russia. He believes technology specialists should not be in charge of developing new products and at the same time responsible for their marketing. If customers have needs, then typically they also have money to spend. The worst thing that can happen is that you end up with a cash shortfall. So in order to become a vendor, you need to build your infrastructure based on your needs, not on perceived importance. If you don't have the infrastructure needed to serve the inventor, he will consequently be unable to finish his invention. By the way, the idea to cater to existing market needs is not new. This is how Fakil Association in Akadem Gorodok operated already in its early years. In the early 50s and 60s, the so-called Kasigan reforms were implemented and companies were given significant financial independence. Then young scientists from the Novosibirsk Science Campus came up with the idea of using the profits for civil purposes. They formed the NPO FAIKL, which by the way means torch in Russian. This organization is very similar to the Innovation Technology Park. Thousands of people worked in FAIKL and revenue reached several million rubles. Great money at that time. But FAIKL was quickly extinguished. 
My guess is that it did not fit well with Soviet reality. Most of those who see the technology park building for the first time at first think they might have mixed up the address. There is a winter garden to have a nice rest or hold negotiations. Atrium also enables to ensure natural lighting from the inside. Each door in this hall is an entrance to a small, independent private technology company focusing on very specific areas. Eventually, we'll have 12 companies, and five are already based here. Equipment for two more companies has been installed, and by the end of the year, nine out of those 12 will have been started. A specific necessity of manufacturing instrumentation is that the expertise of many people is required. Metal or plastic body, integrated circuit technology, power supply and a variety of different components. In the end, the device should have excellent packing. All this is done by service companies located in the technology park. A service company is a specialized entity providing one or several similar services. High expertise in their specific field is the foundation that company has very low expenses. Some service companies were established with state support and some with the help of private investments. All these companies are small. Their main purpose is to improve the product offering of other companies. This company is working with sheet metal. The raw material comes in two ways – sheet metals of uniform thickness and profiles, pipes and rods, etc. GARS company does hydroabrasive and laser cutting. This machine can cut any rough piece of metal sheet up to 20 centimeters thick using a water jet. The other one uses laser. The company is open to any types of orders and even does one-off projects for prototypes. Soon they will enable their online ordering. We are not targeting large buyers or consumers. On the contrary, we're focused on smaller customers. Our major goal is to give our customers as quickly as possible accurate delivery times and pricing information. And we never refuse small orders. That's our competitive advantage. Here the company specialist executed in a simple rush order while the customer is present. This customer was in need of a one-off piece made out of metal. Neither him nor us could believe that we can turn it around that quickly. So we asked to prove it by performing a simple task and cutting the word techno park out of metal sheet. Production of this piece took 22 minutes from the idea to finished product. Next to GARS is a corporation that offers lathe and milling service to create specialized parts. At the entrance is a showcase with samples. Inside the company they use modern equipment, process the orders and assign jobs with automated IT technology. This system avoids using engineers to distribute information in person. Each employee can see the workflow and the prioritization of individual components on their monitors. They also see the explosion diagram with all the necessary components. This approach saves time for the production engineers and enables better priority setting. This management methods were adapted from leading theoretical approaches. Most of our workflow methodology was adapted from Eliyahu Goldratt's theoretical work. The same theories were applied to the company structure and the project management procedures. Of course, we're not perfect yet, but we are learning and our PNL proves that we're increasingly becoming labor efficient. Another important unit of the instrumentation manufacturing cluster deals with precision mechanics. Machines can produce parts that require a precision of one thousandth of a millimeter. All the machines are separated from each other and vibrations are avoided to guarantee highest product quality. The black squares you see here are concrete foundations with a depth of two and a half meters and vibration isolated from the main floor. And this is true for every single machine. One floor above is the prototyping center. Any idea can be materialized here into a tangible plastic model, which can be shown to the customer. First, a computer model is created and then printed on 3D printer. A production mold is afterwards made from the 3D form. Our molds enable us to make small pilot production runs for future mass production. The mold material is limited to 20 castings, and the cost of each is relatively high. This device's components, for example, will cost several thousand rubles, but this is only for a small prototype series. 
Conventional molds allow to produce cheaper parts with piece cost from 20 to 30 rubles, but it can only be accomplished with high volume runs to justify the amortization of the metal mold cost of 1 million rubles or more. Of course, this is too expensive for a startup that wants to test the acceptance of a product. It is more economical to make a 3D model costing 10 to 20,000 rubles and spend a few thousands for a small production run. Innovators don't need to know how things are done. The information stand at the entrance of the technology park lists all the technologies of the service companies and their contact information. At each company's entrance, products are on display, so visitors can see potential applicability. Major specialization of the science campus is instrumentation manufacturing, but the founders are more ambitious. Each product line we develop requires its own technological service. Any designer can materialize his innovative device from the drawing, from prototype to even a small production run. We solved our problems here for a few companies, but business development is now central to our expansion. A nearby building for a material science cluster is already being built. The building was designed with input from subject matter specialists. The towers in the distance are glass panel covered and will be future home to IT companies and business incubators. Should a technology park be specialized at all? It probably depends on the situation. But one thing is certain. If a group of companies in a given area have a certain specialization, then this is always good. There's no doubt the specialization requirement is deepening, and therefore we need better experts and specialized machines and services. According to preliminary estimates, the companies in the technology park this year will achieve a revenue of 12 billion rubles with payments of about 3 billion rubles in taxes. These figures will grow exponentially once the construction of all facilities is completed and the buildings are fully occupied. The founders of the Akadem Gorodok Technology Park in Novosibirsk hope that their experience will be useful to founders of similar projects all over the country.